Hi everyone, Terrible Dactyl here, and welcome back once again to Jurassic Plastic. We're looking at a couple of Quetzalcoatluses today. As you can see, I've got the original Carnegie Collection Quetzalcoatlus, and the updated 2007 brown Quetzalcoatlus uh, paint scheme. And I'm just going to do a very quick review of both of these. They're pretty much identical models, and um, so since the only main difference is the paint scheme, I figured I'd review them together. So let's take a look at the original one. Now the original Quetzalcoatlus um, has a, a nice little texture to it. I, I like the wrinkling texture on the wings. You can see it's got um, a, sort of a mottled light gray and dark gray color pattern, which I think is really cool. Um, it kind of grades into this darker gray and black color pattern here on the torso with these feathers or picnofibers. fibers. Let's see if I can get it to focus here. A little bit more on that detail. This was the first furry pterosaur released in the Carnegie line. <laughs> I just realized I said this is the first furry pterosaur released in the Carnegie line. This is the second of two pterosaurs released in the Carnegie line. So this is the only furry pterosaur that they have. Um, you can see that that fur extends all around the torso, up onto the neck about halfway down, towards the head, and just a little bit on the legs and the tail here, and not too much onto the arms, just onto the upper arm here. The legs have this little uh, bird-like texture to them, and um, it's, I guess, supposed to indicate little scoots or something on the feet, which I think... Um, could be inaccurate unless those are just supposed to be wrinkles. We know from skin impressions of admittedly much, much, much smaller pterosaurs than a Quetzalcoatlus that uh, the feet and pretty much all of the bare skin would be pretty much smooth, maybe with some really, really minute scales. Um, but overall, that is actually well represented here because there's no scale texture anywhere on this model other than right there possibly on the feet with these little scoot like marks uh, indicated. Throat pouch is obviously supposed to be bare skin so is the texture around the head which kind of extends up behind the crests around the ear here and um, grades into the beak. The beak has a little bit of striation pattern, and it's colored this dark yellow to kind of separate it from the rest of the head. That goes up on top of the crest as well. The eyes are just pure black dots, and the nostrils are here highlighted in black too. The head has this cool little wiggly, squiggly, stripey thing, and we get a little pink both in the mouth with this weird kind of elevated tongue like it's screeching and also on the throat pouch. The underside is unpainted. This was one of the first new models in the Carnegie line to be only partially painted. And you can see it's made of this very very flexible white rubber so that you can really play with it. Um, the Pteranodon was like that too but the wings were not fully outstretched on the pteranodon. It wasn't really in a flying pose. It was in sort of a crawling or climbing pose. And uh, the Quetzalcoatlus, I think, is a better toy in that regard because you can really flap its wings. You can put it into a lot of different poses. It's not going to stay that way, obviously. I wonder if they had made this a few years later, they would have made the wings, at least at the base, somewhat bendable, like the Tanistrophius. I think in this um, instance, that might have actually been pretty cool to do. Even though in one of my other videos, I think I criticized the Tenistrophius for having an action feature. But, you know, as toys, you do want to give this something to add a little bit of interest. I don't know if pterosaurs are usually big sellers among kids. Um, pterosaurs, you know, in pop culture tend to be more background, I guess, until we get to, like, the ferocious, weird demon things in Jurassic World. But um, let's take a look at the info stamp here. Quetzalcoatlus, 1997. Uh, obviously, 
Produced in 1997, this actually came out in 1998 alongside the Delta Dromius and the Baryonyx. It has a large CE mark. And I really like the texturing on the wings. It gives it a little bit of a leathery look, but, but more of a leathery texture, not so much that really um, saggy uh, look that the Pteranodon's wings had. And that, that texture even goes on to the, the arm bones a little bit too, which is cool. Now, accuracy-wise, the Quetzalcoatlus is not accurate at all, really. Um, I think the wings are too narrow. I think the legs are not long enough. The neck is not long enough. The head is completely the wrong shape. Now, those in the know will realize the reason for this is because this is based almost entirely on uh, a famous painting of Quetzalcoatlus by John Sibick. And um, he was using, first of all, they didn't really know a lot about as dark proportions at that time, but also he was basing this on a specimen, uh, a partial skull specimen that had some asso uh, associated other material with it, I think, that um, it probably does not belong to Quetzalcoatlus probably belongs to some kind of contemporary, maybe even like Tapajarid or something, um, which is why we get this sort of short, sort of um, sharply tapered beak here, um, which is more characteristic of a Tapajarid beak. And the little crest almost looks more like a female Pteranodon than, than the crests that are known for both um, Tapajarids and other Ashdarkids like Quetzalcoatlus, although some Tapajarids did have uh, a spur pointing out the back here to support a larger rounded crest. So it's a nice representation of, uh, you know, classic paleo art for sure. Doesn't really have much of anything in common with the Quetzalcoatlus. The entire body shape on this would have to be completely overhauled. Overall, I think this looks much more pteranodonted, which in the early 90s and late 80s probably was an okay guess for um, as darkid proportions. Just turned out that those were completely wrong, unfortunately. So it's a little bit of a shame that they chose to just repaint this instead of completely remaking it. And I want to take a very quick look at the repaint. Um, the repaint, it has obviously a completely different color scheme. It is this nice yellowish um, orangey brown color with a really rich reddish brown on the picnic fibers there. Um, if you take the head out of the equation, I think uh, the paint scheme on this, the paint application on the newer one, I think looks a lot better. I do prefer the color pattern of the original more. I really love this modeled gray wings with the darker and uh, the more contrast on the bottom so it's a little counter shaded. This one doesn't really have any counter shading. It's pretty much the same color on the top and the bottom. But the colors on this do look a lot richer, a lot more nicely blended. And um, you know, there's something to be said for it. I like the fact that these um, feet have a little bit more detail on them thanks to the dark wash compared to the original's feet. Um, it brings out the texture and the sculpting on the toes a little bit more and also on the fur. Just that extra dark, um, darker brown wash over it looks really nice. The the head, um, you know, I, I can't say I like this that much better than the original. I do like the color pattern on the head on this one a little bit more, but the eyes really don't do it for me. They look a little bit cartoonish, I think, with that big, big yellow eye with the black dot in the middle. You'd think an animal of this size would probably have a much smaller eye proportionally. And it is the same size eye as this, but as you can see, now we're, it's going to try to focus on the wings here, so let me see if I can do this. Okay, you can see that on the new version, They've painted with this glossy black paint all around the eye, which unfortunately eliminates the beautiful texturing, the really cool like eyelid detail that they had on the original is gone with this. So the original head, I think, 
objectively is better. The paint scheme on that one brings out the sculpt better, and the transition to the beak is a lot better on the original. You can see it just very gently grades to that yellow beak, whereas in this one we've got just flat yellow across the bottom, and this line where the gray starts, which doesn't even go all the way to where I think the beak should start. It kind of even incorporates some of the this cheek sort of area here, which looks funny. Um, I think they could have filled that part in with brown and just had the upper and lower beak be colored. It's got dark brown on top, which is, you know, it's an interesting color scheme. I like it, but I like the execution on the original a lot more. The remake is also made of stiffer plastic. Now technically this is the second remake of Quetzalcoatlus. You can see the um, wing, uh, the info stamp here, is in the three line format. One, two, three lines. Whereas the original and the actual 2007 remake had the four line format. One, two, three, four lines. You can look at pictures on uh, my website, carnegiecollection.blogspot.com, and you will see that there is the earlier 2007 version of the brown Quetzalcoatlus with four lines on the info stamp. And uh, this one, I think, came out at about 2012 or 2013 when they switched to the three lines across the board on all the models and the clue is that they have added the scale. You can see here the scale is listed as 155. What? Yeah. 155. The original was advertised as 140. Now if I measure the wingspan from tip to tip and do the calculation which you can see on my website, this does come out to exactly 140. Now the proportions are way off. But going just by the wingspan, this is a 140 model. Obviously, it should have a much longer neck, larger head, longer legs, yada, yada, yada. But in terms of just wingspan, which I'm sure is the, um, the dimension that they measured when they were coming up with the scale, this is 140. At 155, this would be enormous. This would have a wingspan of like, what, 50, 50 feet, 60 feet? I'd have to calculate that. There is no way that this size, here's my marks, caveman, this guy is 140, so 155, like, like out to there? No, there's no pterosaur that big that we know of. I don't know why they changed some of these scales um, later on in the line like this, and in a couple of cases made them actually less accurate. Um, I don't know, maybe they were measuring by skull length instead of wingspan length that time? That could be it. Because the Quetzalcoatlus skull would certainly be a lot bigger, or maybe even body length. Because the proportions are so out of whack on this, you can see how they could have gotten confused with the scale, I guess. Um, so, anyway, just to highlight a couple things, um, this, uh, in terms of accuracy, both models do have the pteroid bone, although it is not painted on either of them, but you can see, if you look carefully, that it is sculpted here. So it's a little hard to miss. They also do have the patagium between the leg and the tail. You can see here, connects just like that. It's barely visible just because of the leg position. It's actually painted on the original. Uh, so overall, these are nice little models, and um, they're fun to play with. I think this one more so because it's more rubbery. I'm not actually sure how rubbery the actual 2007 one is. Once again, this is the 2012 version. But based on the other 2007 remakes, I'd say that it's at the very least this kind of less flexible plastic, um, if not even harder plastic, because I know a lot of the 2007 repaints were done in much harder plastic than the originals. But anyway, there you have it. These are the two different versions of the Carnegie Collection Quetzalcoatlus. And I want to say thank you once again for watching Jurassic Plastic. Please make sure you hit the like button and subscribe and hit me up in the comments if you have anything you wanted to add or any other reviews that you'd like to see. And until next time, this is Terrible Dactyl. Thanks again for watching.